The first elementary sorting method that we're going to take a look at is an easy method known as selection sort. Uh, the idea of selection sort is to start out with an unsorted array, and we'll use these uh, playing cards as an example. Uh, in, in the i-th iteration, we go through the array to try to find the smallest remaining entry. In this case, uh, the 2 is the smallest remaining entry. Uh, and then we'll swap that uh, with the first uh, entry in the array, and then we know we've got one step done. Selection sort is based on iterating that idea. Okay, so the basic uh, selection sort method is to, in the i-th iteration, find the smallest remaining entry in, uh, to the right of i, or bigger index than i, uh, and then swap that with i. So when we start out, uh, i's at the left end, uh, and then the remaining, all the remaining entries are to the right. Uh, we scan through, and the smallest one uh, is the two, uh, three entries from the right. So we swap that. Uh, so that's the first step. Now that part of the array to the left of i is in its final order, and we simply continue. So now the smallest is the 3, swap that with i, increment i. So now we have the 2 and 3 in order, and continue in that way. Find the smallest, it's the 4, swap that one with i, increment i. Find the smallest, it's 5, swap that with i, increment i. Find the smallest, swap that with i, increment i. <clears throat> Each time we have to scan through all the remaining entries in, in order to find the smallest, uh, but then once we found it, we only have to swap two cards. Uh, those, those are both key properties of selection sort. Uh, now the eight's the smallest, and we swap. And now we know they're in order, but the program doesn't, so it has to look and decide that uh, i and min are the same. Uh, and then it swaps it with itself uh, and does the same thing for the last. Uh, and so after that process, then uh, we know that the uh, entire array is in its final order, all sorted. All right, so uh, let's, one way to understand the way that an algorithm works is to think about invariance. So for the selection sort, we have a pointer that was our variable i that scans from left to right. That's indicated by a little red arrow in this representation. The invariants are that the entries on and to the left of the arrow are never change and they're in ascending order. No entry to the right of uh, the arrow is smaller than any entry to the left of it. That's the way that we set it up. Uh, and the algorithm maintains those invariants by finding the smallest entry to the right and exchanging it with the next one. So uh, the code implements the invariants. So to move the pointer to the right, we increment i. So now the invariant uh, might be violated, so we have to fix it. It might be violated because you might have an element to the right of the pointer uh, that is uh, <clears throat> smaller than some the element on the pointer. So what we have to do is identify the index of that minimum entry and exchange it. Then once we've exchanged it, again, we've preserved our invariant. After that point, uh, no element to the left of the pointer is going to change, and all the element, there's no smaller element to the right. <clears throat> uh, and that gives us uh, immediately our code for the selection sort implementation. Uh, we identify uh, the uh, length of the array that's in n. Uh, then we have a for loop that goes through every element in the array. We keep a variable uh, min that is the index of the uh, going to be the index of the smallest element to the right of pointer i. Uh, we have an inner for loop that for j, if it finds a smaller one, resets min. Uh, and then once we've looked at all the elements to the right of i. Uh, we exchange the smallest one with i. Uh, that's a complete implementation of selection sort. Now, uh, it's easy to develop a mathematical model for the cost of selection sort, uh, and here's the uh, proposition that describes that. Uh, selection sort uses uh, about n squared over 2 compares and exactly n exchanges. And just looking at this trace of selection sort in operation uh, really uh, is proof, visual proof of this proposition. 
In this diagram, the entries in black are the ones that are examined in order to find the minimum each time with the minimum in red. The entries in gray are not touched. They're in their final position. Well, you can see that this is an, gonna be an, in general an n by n square uh, and about half of the elements uh, in the square are black or about n squared over two. Uh, and you can see also the exact formula, n minus one plus n minus two and so forth uh, is the total number of compares used. Uh, and then on each of the n uh, values of the variable i, uh, there's an exchange. So that's uh, the cost in terms of the number of exchanges. Uh, now, what's interesting about this uh, proposition about selection sort is that it doesn't matter what order the input is, uh, selection sort's going to use quadratic time because it always has to go through the whole thing to look for the minimum. Uh, another property is that uh, you can't sort moving less data because selection sort uh, does just a linear number of exchanges. Every item uh, is put into its final position uh, with just one exchange. Uh, let's look at the animation of selection sort uh, in operation. <clears throat> you can see our pointer moving from right to left. Uh, and every time it finds uh, the smallest element to the right, it exchanges it into position. <clears throat> now, uh, if the array is partially sorted, doesn't matter to selection sort. Uh, it still has to go through, even if it's totally sorted, it still has to go through to decide uh, where that minimum element is. That's selection sort, our first elementary sorting method.